Hey, what's up investors? I came across something interesting today. Uh, AMD, uh, that's what we wanna cover right now. It had a big drop. Uh, you can see at the top of the screen about a little over 8% drop today. And so I just wanna go into what actually happened uh, and just what my thoughts are about this. So let's pull me off to the side here. Uh, so as you can see, it dropped 8.29% today. Just for the day, uh, it started at about like 119 and it fell all the way to 109. And then if we wanna scale it back about a month, overall for about a month, it was at 120, fell back to 109. And then for the year to date, way back at the beginning of the year, it started at 150. And all of a sudden here we are at 109. So let's see what actually caused this dip of close to 10% drop in just one day. So let's see what actually happened. So there's this analyst at Barclays named Blaine Curtis, who of this day downgraded AMD, lowering the price target from $148 at the end of the year to now 115. And when he announced this, the, the stock was trading at 119. So this basically triggered a sell off for this company. It probably wasn't intended to, but for this guy to announce that, yeah, it led to a sell-off. And just to get a little background on this guy, he's been in the semiconductor here for almost 20 years. He's He was at Wells Fargo for a year, then he moved to Schwab for a year, went to Jeffries & Company for a little over six years, and now he's into Barclays for over 11 years. So he's He's been in this industry for a long time, so this guy clearly knows more than me, so we have to take this serious, and that's why it sold off so quickly, because this one guy said one thing about the company, and it dropped. So um, just to kind of continue on here, so he says uh, in a note that the company's growth story needs to pause as cyclical risks loom in 2023, and so I've definitely heard this theory that in 2023, the whole semiconductor industry should, uh, that demand should kind of uh, trail off. And it's not necessarily because of the demand is trailing off, it's more because the supply should catch up to the demand in about 2023. Initially, it was, it was gonna catch up in the second half of 2022. And then I heard that no, it's more likely gonna be early 2023. I've also heard the case that it's not gonna happen until 2024 like early 2020, I'm sorry, early 2024. Uh, my thinking is this industry is gonna be just fine until more like 2025, maybe 2026. And my thinking for that is because that's when all these companies such as Intel, TSM, uh, Samsung, that's when all their foundry companies are going to finally uh, be built and start to have their products released out to the world because that's why we have the shortage. You know, we only have a couple facilities that are supplying these chips. And once all these other facilities get built, that's when the product's gonna get super cheap and the profit margins are gonna drop. And that's when I think the bubble is gonna happen. But once again, thinking of it as an investor, you have to kind of beat the market and so when I think it's gonna happen in 2025, really you have to start planning ahead around like mid to early 2024. And so that's why I feel like we still have a lot of time. He's saying 2023 next year. I think we have more time than that, but we'll just have to monitor this company, see how it goes, especially over the next two quarters, because as we continue on through this, he also mentions AMD, AMD still looks positioned to gain share this year in both the client and server markets. And while we do see an upside to 31% growth target this year, where we have an issue is 2023 once again, as we see cyclical risk across several end markets. And those end markets, which definitely makes sense here, he's saying the PC market, the gaming, and broad-based. And broad-based, that's more to do with uh, Linux acquisition, uh, which is, um, what is it like flag um, FP FPG uh, I can look it up real quick but 
yeah, so that has to do with Linux and their chips that they recently acquired. So the analyst is saying that those three segments are running at elevated levels right now, which yes, I 100% agree with that. And so this is the risk for the company's growth. He just feels like those three segments and AMD has a couple other segments, but those three specifically are gonna trail off. And so uh, I know they have the data centers and I guess that's what he's mentioning up here, the data centers, I, I guess that's what the client and server markets are referring to. That's gonna get bumped up. And I think they're also in the EV market to a little extent. So we'll have to look into the different segments, but those are three core segments that AMD's in. The PC and gaming for sure, that's big. And then that acquisition that they got, if those three are gonna trail off here in the next year, which is definitely believable, yeah, it's gonna stunt their growth. And so that's why we'll need to track how AMD does over the next uh, one to two quarters to see, they're, they're definitely gonna be beating their revenue growth from last year, hopefully by about that 30%. But then we also wanna see how are they growing from the quarter that they just had? What's the growth into next quarter? And we have also have to factor in the fact that they bought Linux and that new revenue is gonna get injected into their financial statement. So we'll have to factor that in and try to make it more apples to apples because it's gonna be a completely different spreadsheet or financial statements coming up in the next quarter. So we'll have to analyze that. Not until we see that will we start to see how is the company growing throughout the year and how likely is this gonna be the case. So let's just uh, look at the uh the technical analysis here, and it's kind of just see where we're at. So as of right now, they're at this 109, we'll zoom in some, and that's right in between our two uh, safety lines, our resistance slash um, uh, like ceiling lines here we have. So 114, that was our one of our higher points, and then we still have a strong support line at 100, and we're pretty much right in the middle of that, more on the high side, and so last time I touched on this, when I saw this green candle go up to close to 120, I thought, you know what? We might have broke out of this uh, downtrend here. We, we went above this resistance level. There was a chance that we could, that this stock was gonna jump all the way back up to 136. But no, that is not the case because here we are, we're pulling back and pulling back hard. And so there's still another day before this candle becomes solidified and because this is a weekly each candle is one week so we'll see how tomorrow uh, turns out uh, let's go back just for a second it looks like it's going up in the after hours just a little bit uh, we'll see how it actually plays out over the course of friday but for right now yeah it pulled right back so we're actually still right on pace with this downtrend we have here and so i could see this if it continues we could trace back all the way to 100. Now, I feel like 100 is a strong support line. If this drops to 100, I am going to buy a lot more, a lot more. Uh, I really believe in this company. I think they're gonna be great, especially in the short term and the long term. But yeah, so you can see we are just stuck in here. So I guess what this guy's saying that Blaine Curtis is saying is he's expecting us to basically kind of hang out in this zone, just like we did back here from about July of 2021 to about October. He's expecting us to kind of hang out in this range for a little bit of time, close to maybe the rest of the year is what he's thinking. Uh, we'll kind of see how that plays out. Uh, and the reason why I just like them is because once again, just looking at a short term over this year, based on year over year growth, this company is gonna grow 30%, 30% if not more over these next quarters based, based on last year. The, the factor that is gonna matter, I guess slightly more, what he's looking at is what are they doing quarter from quarter? And I recall something like this quarter's financials compared to the prior quarter was only up about three to maybe 5% somewhere in that range. So that's not that much growth, but of course there's still a lot of time to go. We'll see 
how the next quarter goes. If it also grows another three to five percent, you know, that's okay because that would mean over the course of a year, they still had about 20 to and more like 15 to 20 percent growth, which is okay. It's it's not what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm more shooting for 25 percent. So we'll see how it kind of plays out. We'll, ha we'll definitely have to see how that acquisition plays out for them as well as the data centers. But overall, to me, I just view this as a decent time to buy. I bought a little bit more today. Anytime it pulls back that drastically, yeah, I think that's a decent time to buy. If it pulls back more, I'm looking to buy more. Overall though, if you're just starting a position, um, I would say this is a fair time to buy. It, it's not anything crazy. If it gets close to 100, that's a for sure buy to me. And if it's at 115, based on that analyst's uh, perspective, that would actually be a time to hold off. You know, if, if you do have some, maybe it's a time to sell for you. But if you're looking to enter this stock, based on what he's saying, it's probably not a good time because he's estimating that by the end of the year, it's only gonna go from about 109 to about 115. So that's not that great of a return. It all depends on how much risk you want. But so for me, my opinion would be, it's an okay time to buy. Like I, no one's gonna, like it's definitely a fair time to buy. And especially over the course of, if you're a long-term investor, I do think this one's gonna jump back up, but we'll just kind of see how it plays out. Uh, the next reporting date for them also is, it's coming up. So at the end of the month, we'll get a new report. I, I wanna see what their growth was quarter to quarter. So um, that kind of wraps this up. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and that just gives you an idea of what actually happened today. That was the big news. Just one guy, one guy gave a different opinion and changed this stock completely. So we'll see how things go in terms of sales and whatever at that next quarter release, end of April. So uh, please like, subscribe. Um, and if you don't have a Webull account, which is what I'm using here to kind of track the stock, uh, there's a link in the description. You can open your account. You get five free stocks. Uh, feel free to do that. But otherwise, have a great night, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.